In today's hobby video, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build the Mighty Band Blade. Right, so before you begin the build, you're going to have to remove all the parts from the sprue, and I've personally opted to do them all at once. All the major big parts, all the smaller parts I leave in the frames for now. Um, GW are pretty good in marking the confusing parts, uh, which are tied back to the instruction manual. Um, so it's not too bad doing it in one bulk sort of job of removing all the mold lines. Obviously this video is huge because this model is massive. Uh, the footage is sped up by 250% and to further help you navigate the build in the scrubber or the tiling down the bottom will be like chapter markings of where I've um, started to build certain parts. I will come in at certain points and give commentary on key aspects um, that it would be confusing or a bit fiddly. Um, another key point is this build doesn't include the, um, any of the tracks. I'll do subsequent videos on how I paint the uh, band blade, but I always paint the, the, um, the tracks in the sprue. So I don't actually attach the tracks at all. And as you see, I attach some parts using blue tack to hold them all in place. Likewise, uh, this build actually doesn't fully glue the kit together because uh, I will magnetize in the future and also personally I prefer to paint the, um, the kit individual parts because the thing is so massive it would be quite hard to paint all of it at once. But anyway, enjoy it. Uh, I've got a bit of background music to keep you going uh, and um, good luck. And the next part is um, optional, I'm filling in some pretty big gaps you can see um, on the uh, wheel carriage here. Using green stuff, didn't have to do this, if you don't want to uh, see this part just scroll forward about a minute. Uh, but basically the key piece of advice is to always use um, wet fingers, actually dip, uh, dip your fingers in a little tub of water. And you can see I'm basically sort of shoving it in there, uh, either quite critty with my fingers, or in a moment you'll see me actually use a tool to uh, drag it across. Um, I think a good tip is to actually use like a ball of green stuff to sort of pull it off as well. Uh, but here you can see I'm sort of shoving it into the gap quite crudely. 
um, and in a moment I think I actually roll up like it up into like a little snake that you put it more uh, precisely uh, but you can see there I've used a ball of uh, grease stuff to sort of pick it off yeah so here I'm actually using like um, a bit more direct because I don't want to get it stuck on the rivets so to make it into like a little snake push it in with the um, the head of like a soft softer tool not a sharp blade then massage it in uh, it takes a bit of time but it's actually worth the effort because I think these gaps were quite big So first use of blue tack now is uh, to uh, attach the front track guard with the lamps on top. And likewise also the uh, rear track guard with the, the fuel drums attached to it. You can see now the um, wheel carriages are looking pretty good with the gaps filled in. And there is a single piece which will pick a moment uh, which you can't put in place because you've got to glue it in place, that little spring type thing. Put it for safekeeping, you have to attach it later when you paint the model. So it's important I call out something here. As we glue the two wheel carriages together, if you do wish to glue in place one particular style, be say the band blade or a shadow sword, you will have to also glue in place at the front of the vehicle, the bonnet of the model. We'll look at this more at 11 minute 30 mark, but I want to call it out now because if you glue it together like I just have then, it does make it a bit more challenging later on if you do wish to go one particular style. I'm doing this because I magnetize the model as I said before. But either way, take note and scroll forward to limit 30 mark for a bit more detail.
to this bonnet piece I spoke to before. You can see as I've laid out here the two type of styles you'll uh, mostly use. I um, mean the bonnet pieces are those pieces that you're um, on the front. So this piece and its other one there. You can see it's got these protrusions that stick out on both of them and they go into uh, these little cavities uh, in the wheel carriages. As I said before, if you want to glue together one particular style, you'll need to put this in before you glue the two wheel carriages together. But if you're going to magnetize like I am, you'll need to do it at this stage. I'm just illustrating here how it all comes together eventually. You can see for the band blade style, that slides in there. Um, and what I'm doing here now is cutting off these protrusions, which allows it to magnetize. There'll be a separate video on magnif magnification, but it's really important that I sort of illustrate this at this point. Because if you don't glue it in place at the earlier stage, you need to basically cut it off like I did anyway. So hopefully that's clear. Any questions in the comments? Um, but we'll keep going. A quick note here, as I move on to the driver's periscope or vision block, there is a very, very small second piece which is attached to a second piece of track in one of the sprues. I mistook this for a piece of leftover mold line I chucked in the bin, so very annoying. But actually it's used specifically to make like a vision um, shield for the, um, the, the periscope block. As you can see, I leave the window open. I'll put a driver in the back so you can see him, but be really careful with the um, sprue. Um, and don't make the mistake I did.
Right, so quite a fiddly part uh, coming up here. So fitting the sponsor and weapons. I gave it the heavy flamers and I got the feeling they'd actually made that well to fit into what I'll show you in a second. I don't glue them in place because I will obviously paint them individually as said before. But as I'm illustrating here how it all comes together. Um, we need to apply glue is actually on the uh, sort of shield thing here. There's two little holes you apply glue in. Now as I try to squeeze these through, they don't fit at all. They're really quite tight. I think it's perfectly made for heavy bolters, but the flame is it's very disciplinedly quite challenging. So as you sort of ram them through, uh, you have to put them in place carefully, make sure the glue sticks. As I said before, I'm using heavy flamers. Uh, it's my personal choice. And I don't actually glue them in place as I said before, but you can see how it all comes together. So if you do glue it in place, um, and when it's eventually painted, and I'll put it all back together, it then all sits like I show here. So basically the sort of uh, central axis point, which is, allowed, is, is where the glue goes, and then the rest of it doesn't get glued. Obviously you glue the rest of the, um, the top sort of part of it together, and then it allows it to move freely like it does like that. So you're quite fiddly for the flamer, but I think it's okay for the heavy bolter. Uh, but anyway, good luck. Right, so at this point, uh, if you are making the band blade or hell hammer, you're pretty much done. As I said before, I don't glue everything in place, including that little grill part, because I want to paint the engine inside so I can see through the grill. Same, same, the, um, the antenna. And also I think it's called the uh, cupola, where I blue tack that in place. Obviously the turret comes off, and as I just showed there, the barrel comes off as well. And as same, same for the um, front heavy bolter. You can see um, a bit of detail about how I magnetize, but this is how I will um, basically paint the kit in individual components because it's so bloody big. So as I said, this is where basically the band, blade and hill hammer are finished. Um, there's a couple of small accessories I don't put on the model at this point in time. Uh, there's the crewman who'll become the driver, and likewise the tracks aren't there. So if you are finished uh, for the band, blade and hill hammer, well done. But I now go on to the other two, four, six variants to complete now. So let's keep going.
So with all the main weapons finished, it's now time to um, assemble it. Remember, I'm magnetizing, so I'm not gluing in place, but if you are gluing in place, just follow the same steps. The front bonnet goes in, and you can see the um, heavy bolters weren't put in place or stuck in place. That back piece uh, then has like an engine cover. And now to achieve the Storm Sword, Shadow Sword, and Bane Sword, um, that front piece, which you can see there, which is magnetized onto the, um, I guess, the turret, acts as both um, a front bonnet extension, and for the other ones I'll show also um, the extended fighting uh, bay. Now, um, for the three variants, I said Storm Sword, Shadow Sword, and Bane Sword, um, this sort of main turret bit goes in, and this first little divvy wacker is for the Storm Sword. It doesn't stay in place, it's got to work out a way to magnetize it. So this is for the Storm Sword. Now to make the Shadow Sword and Bane Sword, uh, the ginormous long barrel goes in, and as it is now, is the Bane Sword. And this sort of, um, God, what's the front of the barrel called? I don't know, the barrel extender thing. That gives you the Shadow Sword. And finally, this piece here goes on top and squeezes in nice and uh, neat just there. I need to work out a way to make it all magnetized, but if you are gluing in place, this is the time to do it. And you can see how aggressive it looks now for the Shadow Sword, absolutely massive barrel. Right, then the other three variants, the Dune Hammer, Bane Hammer, and Storm Lord. So as I said, this front bonnet section becomes an extended fighting uh, platform. And you can see how far forward the turret sits, if you could call it a turret. There are two extra parts, which I don't glue in place yet, which I've got to work out how to magnetize, but these sit here. And this is where you will mount the two heavy stubbers for the blokes in the back to fire out from. Now then simply to achieve the Dune Hammer and Bane Hammer, um, the same turret piece goes in, and that little barrel extension piece goes in, and this gives you the Dune Hammer. Now the um, Bane Hammer it simply is as it is, and then for the Storm Lord, it's a bit more complicated. The, um, I think it's a twin Vulcan Gatling cannon it sits in like this. And basically then this uh, same piece here will fit on top. And that's the same for the Bane Hammer and Dune Hammer. So yeah, this is basically it assembled. It looks a bit wonky because it's not glued together. But again, if you're gluing in place for one particular variant, just glue it all in place. But I'm doing so because I'll magnetize. But that's basically the build. There's a couple of small pieces lifting, like the heavy stubber. Um, maybe you're going to stick a storm bolter on top if you've got that, and likewise a crewman. But that's basically it. So that's it. End of the tutorial. Thanks for watching. If, like me, you've been doing this for many, many days, if not weeks, hopefully it's been enjoyable and this has been helpful. As you can see, and as I've said before, I don't glue and place the tracks. Um, I've used blue tack a lot and likewise magnification for a lot of the pieces. A bit more disjointed doing it this way, so if you are gluing in place, it's a whole lot easier. As I said before, a couple of accessories aren't in place, like heavy stubbers. There's also a ladder and obviously crewmen as well. Actually, in the, um, the box, I've got a couple of spare bits left over. I think you will as well. I don't know what they're for, to be honest, but they will come in helpful for future projects. Uh, so any questions um, in the comments, uh, shout them out. Otherwise, my channel covers everything Astra Militarum, including hobby, tactics, and lore. And every like, comment, and subscribe really helps as I build my channel. Feeling super generous, you can support me on Patreon. A link is below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.